In this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use the fabulous new 2J stamps to build this sort of collage background, which is perfect for using for things like your journal books or for cards, or make really good for men's cards. But the sort of collage backgrounds work so, so well. A few different pieces that I've done there. So to start with, I'm going to start with just making a simple card. And I've taken a piece of craft card. And this has been cut to five by seven inches, which is a nice standard size. It'll fit on a nice sort of seven and a half, five and a half inch card blank. And I'm going to add a piece of book paper. So I've taken a piece from an old book. This is actually a pack I bought, but you can get old books from a charity shop. And I'm just going to tear it freehand down one side to give me a strip. Now I'm going to adhere this for speed using spray glue i would suggest using some form of dry glue like a spray glue because what that will actually do is when we start to add ink and things like that it won't bubble up and it won't have the water underneath so i've stuck that down one side i'm going to turn the card over and trim off the excess pieces so we'll take those off and that's our base piece started but everything is still looking a little bit new so what we want to do is to add a little bit of ink into the background so I'm going to start with the eyes ink pigment inks. These are perfect for this. And I'm going to use the red, which is raspberry beret. I'm going to use the roast chestnut and I'm going to use the improper copper, which is one of the metallic colours. And it's fantastic that we can use metallics like this without having to resort to sort of mica powders and things like that. So all I'm going to do is open these up and these come with a little brush on the end, which is absolutely perfect. If you don't put them in properly, what you'll see, if you don't seal it up, you'll see some bits do dry around the top. So be a little bit careful. But all I'm doing is using the brush, put some down onto my Crafts 2 ink blending mat. I'm putting red down first. Then I'm going to put a little bit of brown down. Again, keeping to the same sort of idea. And then I'm simply going to spritz this. So I'm using one of the fine mist sprayers and I'm just going to mist it so it's nice and wet. I'm gonna take my piece and I'm just gonna start picking up color. And if you can see there, it really starts to age it and adds the color on. You can keep moving it round until you've got some really nice bits of color added onto there. Now, I normally don't use kitchen roll, but for this one, I'm going to use kitchen roll and clean up the excess because what you do is you keep this kitchen roll that you have coloured and it cuts the most perfect flowers. So you just screw it up, let it dry, use it a few times with different shades. And then when you unfold, you've got a beautiful marbled look. And what I want to do now is just give this a little bit of a quick dry. So I'm using the low speed on my heat gun just to take the edge off. And I'm using pigment ink because if you notice, this is brown card, so this is craft card. But by using pigment ink, it sits on the surface. And that's the great thing about pigment inks. Dye-based inks are translucent. So if I do this, they'll just darken that brown. Whereas the pigment inks will actually sit on the top. So give that a little bit of a quick dry. Anywhere that's not particularly dry or has got a few pools, you can use a little bit of kitchen mold to take it off, but hopefully you can see there where the colour's sitting over the top. So now I'm going to repeat it using the improper copper. Give these a good shake. Don't worry about using no rolling or anything of that. You just give them a good shake and we get this beautiful copper colour. So all I'm going to do is put the copper down and I'm going to give this a spritz, but I want to give this a really light spritz. So I don't want a lot of dilution in here. And we'll pick up some pieces of copper. And hopefully there we can see. Again, wipe down with your kitchen roll. And give that a quick blast with your heat gun, just to take any of the moisture out. But again, the copper is now sitting on top of there in waves. And once dry, you'll get a beautiful sheen from it and a really different look. So let's we'll give that a dry. I think that's about 90% there. We'll take any excess off. And you can see there, you've hopefully got that beautiful shine coming through. So what we're going to do now is going to start to stamp 
and add and stencil over the top of this. So I'm going to bring in the stencil from the 2J's range, which is a beautiful compass and sort of waves. And these, these designs here were designed to be waves or to be wind. They were designed to work in lots of different ways. And I'm using again, eye zinc dye ink this time because I want that translucent look. So I'm using walnut and I'm just gonna go in from the center and put the walnut in. So I'm going along the center pieces on this. So because I'm using the pigment, the sorry, the dye base ink, I'll be able to see through, so I'll be able to see the text through. So I'm just gonna swap colors and go with the tea, which is more of a sort of a yellowy brown color. And that has a really nice sort of vintage look. So I'm doing that in the outskirts. So I'm doing that on around the outer edges and coming into the center. And I would suggest that you look after your stencil a little bit better than I have. I've used this so much, I've got all sorts of things on here, but it doesn't affect the use of it. If I take that off, you'll be able to see there how I've got it fading across. So I've got that in that corner. And I'm going to take one of the wind or the waves and pop that in this corner where I've got less ink. And again, I'm gonna go in first, this time with the lighter color just to give me a base and then I'm going to come in with the darker shade and I'm just going to add little bits on to shade it across and again then we're starting to build up that collage look so we'll move those out of the way and I'm now going to start with some of the stamps so I'm going to be doing stamping without a stamp platform on this one so I'm going to be using my blocks, my craft to acrylic blocks. I brought in one of the stamping foam panels as this makes it so much easier because clear stamps give you a better impression into foam than they do onto a flat surface. This is a tool that I thought I wouldn't use again once I'd got my stamping platform, but I found subsequently that I use it all the time. So I've taken the world map stamp here and to give me some definition against this, I'm going to use black and I'm going to use Versafine. So I'm just gonna ink up my stamp as I would do normally. So give it a really good inking. And I'm going to come across actually. So I'm not gonna do the full thing. I'm going to come across and give a good impression here. So as if the world map is coming across the page. And then if you notice, some of the design has come onto my map, which means I've lost some ink. So I can actually then use this stamp to add a little bit more texture and pattern into the background. So I'm creating that already. So I'm going to move that one out. I'm then going to grab a smaller block and I'm going to flick to my postcard set, which is the postcard builder. And I'm going to use the Eiffel Tower. And again, I'm going to ink that. And I want to put an element pretty much central. So I'm going to go just there and we'll give that a good impression. So we're starting to build up this collage look and this area pointing into the middle. So I'm going to actually leave that on. I'm gonna ink my stamp, take some excess ink off on a scrap piece of paper, and I'm going to have a couple of ghost stamps coming off to one side. I'm then going to take the little words which is a little bit from a po the postcard set again, which is the Paris. So I'm going to add that into the centerpiece there, but I'm going to add a few more around, just randomly stamping. So I'm just trying to build this little collage look. So ink it and stamp around so that there is sort of text over text. And I'm going to take one of the postcard cart postels so I'm just going to pick that one up and again I'm going to ink that and I'm keeping around this central area so I'm going to pop that just there so I've got that cart post out and I'm going to ink that again and go up here and again any excess ink use it to cross over to create that little bit of extra texture in it and go off the page and then I'm going to add a few of the stamps. So in this set, there's the little sort of penny black stamp. 
So again, I'm going to ink that in black and we're keeping around this area. I'm going to stamp that in. So again, it's fading into the background and we'll have a few more going off the page. We'll pop one up here. Okay, perfect. I'll move that away. And then I'm going to just use the postal stamps. So you've got two of these, which are like the stamps that you would get. And these again are based in France. So these are French for cities. So I'm going to stamp off onto my scrap and then put some of these around. And it's just a case now of building up these areas, going off the page with that one and going, we've got the second one and we'll do the same again. I'm going to put a definitive there. So we've got that Leon and again, do some more off the page and off the edges. And it just keeps that little edge going. And again, there are more stamps in the set that you can be using. There's little tickets and things like that. But all we're trying to do is to build a background. So we're just trying to build one of those sort of background looks that we can use on there. So I've built up my background piece. You can see there I've got all of that detail in. So that would be perfect to actually now start to add something on the top too. But it's still a little bit raw around the edges. So what I want to do is to just take this onto my ink blending mat and I'm going to take the two colours I used before, the tea and the walnut. I'm going to start with the tea and I'm going to age up the edges. So very roughly, I'm going to go around and create some definition going all the way onto the page so that this yellowy colour is coming through. Again, it will show up a lot less. It will just darken on the craft card, but it works really well on the book page that we've done. So again, just go around all the edges. And if you want to, you can take some and darken or soften sort of areas of it. And then I'm going to move on to using the walnut. And to do this, if I do the same technique, I'm gonna get a lot on there. So I'm gonna take the walnut and I'm just gonna flick the finger dauber around the edge, going all the way around, just so that it gives me a darker line at the edge. You can see here, I can color some into that corner, but again, just take it along the edge, really simply. And all it does is it just darkens up that edge. If you want to go a little bit darker on a particular edge, put the paper down and push the ink on like we would do normally. I love doing this on the edge of the book paper because it sort of starts it to curl and things, which works really, really well. And then finally, all we want to do is to highlight some of the areas to make it pop. So I'm going to come in with some of the white eyes ink pigment ink. This is a perfect highlighter. So I'll bring my little palette in and I'm just going to lay down a few lines of the white. So I've got a nice little white area to pick up. I'm going to take my water brush and just take my kitchen roll and make sure that the water brush is clean, but also that it's relatively dry. And I wouldn't use a normal brush. I would use a water brush because it waters it down slightly. And I'm going to pick up some of the colour and I'm just going to put some highlights in. So I'm going to put some highlights in here around the edge of the map. I'm going to put a highlight in underneath the Eiffel Tower and that there. Okay, I'm going to go around the outside of part of this. If you wipe any excess off, you can blend it out. And then just literally follow some of the lines. With the Eiffel Tower, I'm going to put it to the right hand side and pull the colour out just so that we can get a little bit of definition on that there. There we go, let's put a line up there. A little bit of text there, so let's highlight that. We'll highlight the bottom of that one and the stamp. So just putting in a little bit of highlighting.
just so that we're actually then highlighting certain areas and anything else you want to do we put a bit of white in but can you see there you've made a beautiful collage background in no time at all little bits highlighted out and then you would take a main image or you could take some of your embellishments and things so as I've done here I've used some metal embellishments some of the craft 2 vintage ones I've added some shells there's a skeleton leaf on there all very simple things again let's take one of the skeleton leaves you see, we can start to then build up different pieces, stamp over. But it just makes a really, really nice, simple background. And all I would do is mount that onto a black card base because I've used black, which really makes the black and the white pop. And we build up our centre. But a really easy way to do a journal page, a front of a cover or the background for a card using the stamps. Don't just think of the stamps as single images. Think of how you can play with them.